Good morning. A pleasure to have your company for a look at the headlines in our newspaper review. We call this Off the Press. My name is Felicity Eze. We here. I'm joined in the studio by public affairs analyst Atike Chude. Thank you very much for staying with us. Yeah, it's a pleasure. And we are joined virtually by Zeal Akariwe, also a public affairs analyst. Thank you very much, Zeal, for your time. Okay. I I'm told we don't have him on. As soon as we connect with him, we will um, have his thoughts on the headlines. Let's just go straight to the Punch newspaper this morning. The big one is, FG gives National Assembly 27 billion naira for renovation, cuts health UBE votes. Um, uh, we, 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 we must be fair here and say they also cut the renovation cost from 37 to 27 a billion. Uh, that was uh, omitted. <laughs> and then we have uh, two riders. Uh, government slashes primary health care centers fund from 44.4 billion to 25.5 billion. And then the other breakdown as well for you, uh, the cuts that was done on the other sectors. Uh, federal legislators raise oil benchmark to $28, reduce output, excess crude accounts illegal, that's reps. Uh, that's all on the revised budget this morning. At the top of the paper, National Assembly approves Buhari's $5.5 billion budget loan, $22.7 billion facility. You find details of that story on page 27 of the paper. And of course, we can't reopen churches, mosques now, Lagos, Ogun, or your equity. Uh, that's what the state government, uh, the various state governments are saying. We've talked about that a little bit uh, during our news this morning. FIRS stops schools recruited by FOLA from resuming. And at the top of the paper, MAN, LCCI, others urge CBN banks to cut interest rates. At the bottom of the paper, um, there you have it. There's a picture of uh, people looking very, um, officers rather, and men looking very serious. That's the uh, troops of Operation Safe Haven in Plati State. OAU produces anti-COVID-19 herb, awaits a nap tag. Um, approval. We must say it's anti-COVID-19, not a cure uh, today, but that's a good one. Um, as soon as NAPDA can approve it for us. Uh, Lagos consider options for schools reopening. 24 female victims accuse student of rape on Twitter. Magic Fashik debt is still here, a very legendary reggae maestro. Um, Obaseki P man, others mourn him. That's also on the front page. Uniband student suspect arrested as IG on this case transfer. Okay, Atike, let's get you uh, talking. Yeah. The revised budget, 32 to 27. And then we have the healthcare se uh, sector. We just talked about it in the news. Uh, they cut it from 44 to 25 billion. Your thoughts? The government, the Nigerian government committed um, about is it about 10 years ago to fall in line with the ECOWAS, I mean, uh, African Union recommendation of about 15% of the country's budget for healthcare. Nigeria does about 5, 6%. Uh, percent. Countries like Ghana are doing above that. South Africa, Egypt and are doing above that. It gives you an idea of where the priorities of the government lies. And um, at 27 billion for the National Assembly renovation. Almost every year, every two years, they are renovating with uh, some uh, stupendous amounts of money. There are so many Nigerian companies, I want to believe, with capacity that would gladly, uh, you know, want to do it for 10 billion naira. So I'm not exactly judging how they came about that figure, but in a country that is reeling from uh, COVID-19 and, and the dilapidation in our healthcare infrastructure, I think it's a scandal that you are giving a legislators this amount of money for renovation. And I can tell you that in the next two years, that um, we might not exactly need serious drastic renovation. Perhaps maybe the, for sanitary you know, uh, condition, the, the toilets and all of that, those ones might be priorities. Um, uh, but I think it's, uh, it's, it's unfair to Nigerians. You, you, you would not expect with what is going on for the government to think of uh, re reducing again, the amount of money that is being budgeted for healthcare. 
uh, in the country. The legislators absolutely do not need it. What do they do? And people would ask that question. What exactly are they doing uh, over there, apart from the stupendous amount of money they're also receiving as, uh, you know, uh, allowances and, uh, uh, you know, and all these other things they're also getting? All right. I I'm told we have Zeal on the line. Zeal, can you hear me? Good morning. Good morning. I can hear you loud and clear. All right. Thank you very much for joining us. We're already taking a look at the Punch newspaper, and I'd like to take your thoughts quickly on the reopening of churches. The one here on the paper says, we can't reopen churches, mosque now. Uh, we know for Lagos, Ogun, or your equity. Do you expect other states to follow suit in spite of the federal government's relaxation? <laughs> uh, that's a very touching one. Um... I, I, my, my concern with what's going on regarding the efforts at government to maintain some type of, some semblance of social distancing is the inconsistency in the policies and the inconsistency in the actions. It tells me that there's a lot more that needs to be done regarding the thought process. So, for example, you tell me I'm okay to go to work with my friends, but I'm not okay to go for drinks with them. It's the inconsistency that I have a concern with. Uh, if we want to avoid large crowds, we need to do a lot more regarding avoiding large crowds. And I don't think we should look at it from the perspective of churches or mosques. We should take a number and say any gathering of more than X number of people, as long as you cannot maintain a social distancing uh, parameter of two meters per person, then do not open. But when we personalize it and make it a religious issue, it becomes very sentimental. We should be saying, if you're going to have large gatherings, you must maintain a minimum standard of two meters per person. Your entry and exit policies from the structure must be adhered in a certain way that social distancing is maintained. If you can't adhere to those guidelines, then do not open. But when you target specific institutions, it becomes very sentimental, and that's why the whole discussion becomes confusing. All right, um, let's come back to you, Achike. The females that are being raped and they're accusing people, we know that the IG has ordered the case transfer for the Uniben um, student that was also raped, but this time murdered. Uh, what's your take on all of these headlines? Well, the more uh, such stories make the public space through social media, the easier it is for the authorities to uh, be up and doing. And most cases, most times when uh, some of these things happen and uh, they do not receive adequate public attention, they tend to die a natural death. Uh, you know, so, and uh, of course, with the activities of uh, some uh, NGOs, especially gender-based NGOs, I think they are doing a lot to ensure that uh, when some of these things happen, that they follow it all the way you know, to their logical uh, conclusion. Uh, but again, I, I keep on saying that uh, the most stringent punishments should be meted out uh, to people who take advantage of, uh, of uh, the weaker sex uh, for the purpose of uh, forcefully, uh, you know, having a canal knowledge of them. I, I think it's a very, it's a heinous crime. And uh, the worst kind of uh, punishment, uh, maybe not death, should, you yeah. know, should be, uh, you know, uh, meted out to them. Uh, they deserve it for, as for the female, 24 female uh, students that came out to do this. Uh, yeah, now that perhaps I hope that they have a face and they have a name because it, it has always been the issue of uh, stigmatization that has always discouraged people, from, uh, you know, yes. uh, from, you know, reporting. Yeah, I, I read a yeah. bit of the yeah. tweets yesterday. Okay. Um, they, they, some of them were hiding. Uh, still hiding, yeah. but they're reaching out through some social media influencers mm -hmm. and the likes. We certainly hope that uh, the increased media spotlight will help. Um, for yeah, the they, must go beyond, they must go beyond their anonymity. They must come out openly. It's not just for them anymore now, but for other people who might also be victims of such and that type of acts. Yes, out. yes. All right, Zil, let me come back to you on this one. Um, the search for a cure for COVID-19 is still on. Um, a lot of persons are saying they've come up with cure, but the OOU, the OOU, um, you know, that's uh, Abafemi Awolowo University, I think, yes, has come up with an anti-COVID-19 herb. What kind of expedited action are you expecting from <coughs> NAVDAC when it comes to this particular one? Um, uh, that, that's a very technical question that you should direct to the proper health <laughs> professionals 
but in my limited knowledge of what goes on, I don't know many viruses that have cures in my experience. We still have HIV doesn't have a cure till today. As far as I know, getting a cure for a viral infection is very, very difficult. What we tend to do is to get medication that act as palliatives for the symptoms and not necessarily, even the common cold doesn't have a cure. Your body sorts it out in a few days or a few weeks. But if people claim, I'm sure there's a process for verifying their claim, whatever we need to do to expedite that verification, I would expect that would fast track it. That's what we need to do. If people claim they have a cure, at the very least, we must fast track the validation of that claim and release the drug if it actually works. All right, um, let's go to the nation newspaper and see what is the big one here. The government, if you are 55 and above, avoid mosque churches. It has two riders. PTF issues advisory to states to return of, on return of services uh, prayers. Worship centers stay short, says Lagos. We've taken that one a bit. And then we have Buhari to work with others for additioners re-election. Um, that's uh, AFDB president, my clearance by ethics committee, ethics panel in line with rules. Uh, that's another one. And of course, you have the capture of the breakdown of figures. Um, Madek Fashek is also on the front page. Um, why Kalu remains in prison. Um, IG takes over the probe of Unibern students killing. Uh, we've uh, touched on that as well. I'll just drop it open. Um, actually, which of these do you want to take on? We're going to talk about magic fashion for a bit. Yeah, a phenomenon. A phenomenon. Uh, the, the reality is that uh, magic fashion could have uh, achieved much more than he did, if not for the unfortunate turn that his life took. I mean, the, the, the voice was, it was a gift, it was natural. You know, he was a natural musician, and if there was any musician, in fact, beyond Ziggy Mali, uh, you know, Bob, Bob Mali's son, if there was any musician that was close to Bob Mali, in terms of uh, his ability, and then even the voice too, I think that person was um, Majek Fashek. He caught the imagination of a lot of Nigerians when he came out. I mean, he came out with a bang. And then, you know, I remember one of those uh, coincidences that happened. One, you know, I think at a large, I mean, open event, when immediately he struck, I mean, the music started to send down the rain, and then the heavens seemed to open up. I, I, I remember the newspapers, uh, you know, everybody calling him the rainmaker because it was like magic. <laughs> you know, that was the magical touch of Majek Fashek. He was a great he person. But unfortunately, like we said, the latter part of his life was not something that a lot of, a lot of us who loved him were exactly happy with, uh, but he could have done much better, uh, you know, for himself. But again, the pressure of a stardom sometimes has a way of, uh, of uh, pushing people in the wrong direction. Yeah. But he was a great guy, one of the best. Yeah. Okay, um, Zeal, what's your, uh, what, what headline would you want to take on? Or should I just pick one for you? Pick one for me. <laughs> the additional, Buhari to work with others, the AFDB president's uh, controversy, with all the support around him. What, what's your take on it? Buhari is coming out now and to say. To pick, and you really have to pick the difficult one. Um, <laughs> you know, for, for me, um, I, I don't want to sound like I'm overly sentimental about it, but the African Development Bank has its internal protocol, its internal governance. And I think that rule of law is about following those internal protocols. And if they followed it, there were concerns raised. It was raised appropriately to the ethics committee. The ethics committee investigated it and cleared him. I think we must ensure that that rule of law is enforced and upheld. It's asking for an external investigation is implicitly saying that we have a vote of no confidence on the ethics committee of that type of institution. And for me, that ignore who is involved personally, that kind of statement cannot be made against such an institution. You cannot come out and claim and more or less, what's the word, um, accuse the ethics committee of the ADB of being biased, an entire committee of such a large institution. You can't do that and we must not allow it to happen. They have followed their internal protocols. 
the internal protocols have been carried out, he's been cleared. Asking for an external to come and do the job of the ethics committee is implicitly stating that you have a vote of no confidence on the entire ethics committee of the ADB, and that cannot, should not be supported. It doesn't matter that it's a Nigerian involved. It is a process issue. We cannot be stating that we have a vote of no confidence on the processes of such a multilateral. So whatever they've done must be upheld. All right. Let, what what do you have to sense on that? Hundred percent. There is no doubt about that. But again, it goes to show uh, the level of uh, independence of uh, African countries. Uh, of course, we know that over the years, uh, I mean, we, we need to begin to to put our house in our houses in order in Africa. Uh, the fact that uh, we are still open to this kind of overt influence, unnecessary influence, is an indication that we have not exactly, as a continent, made uh, much process. I mean, much progress. And if you look at what happened to Libya today, the fact that today Libya is a no man's land, an Africa that is independent will not have allowed what happened in Libya to have happened at that particular point in time. But when you you find yourself under the appendages of foreign interests, these are the implications, you know, of uh, that kind of uh, you know appendage. It's unfortunate, but I agree with him 100%. All right, gentlemen, let's look at the Daily Sun um, in the time left. Uh, we have um, still on the easing of lockdown. As federal government releases guidelines for worship centers reopening, attendance register must for churches mask. Uh, that's it on your screen. Uh, page 6 and 7 is where you find details. You're talking about running waters, sanitizers, at entry, exit point. Um, no social gathering after service. Lagos defers, insist on closure. Um, I'd like to take Zeal's thoughts on that one uh, quickly before we look at other headlines. Zeal, your take. Yeah, but it's what I said before. I don't yeah, think the, the, the running water said. part of it. Do you think a lot of well, churches it, will be able to provide that? Oh, well, I think all the churches should be able to provide that. Again, I don't want to narrow the discussion down to specific institutions. If you have a situation where you can, you are, have the ability to gather more than a certain number of people, the government should give the protocols for you to open. It doesn't matter if you're a church or a mosque or a restaurant or a school. Okay. These are the protocols to follow. And that's my position because we should not make it a religious matter, whether it's a church or a mosque. If you have more than 20 or 50 people, Everybody that comes in must have washed their hands. There must be social distancing between them. There must be. And that should apply across board for any organization that gathers more than a certain number of people. doesn't right. matter if it's a church or not. Um, actually, Kalu to leave prison soon as court orders his release. I actually saw um, um, a headline this morning that the court has done that. Do you see them releasing him? Um, well, I mean, they, they, we, we, we were told that there was a technical issue that affected, you know, the credibility yes, of uh, the action that led to his conviction. And so if uh, what it means is that uh, as far as this, the allegation concerned that, um, you know, uh, that uh, they are, it's not as if the substantive issue has been dealt with. They, they, they can always bring it back. But, um, it, well, they said he should be released. And I think at the... The judge, uh, a court of uh, competent uh, jurisdiction, has spoken. Of course, a lot of Nigerians, when they, they heard that the very first time, the decision of the higher court, uh, in their own uh, way, they just uh, smiled and said, well, what did you expect? Uh, so we have, you know, when uh, the an age of cynicism, where people feel that uh, if you're big and powerful, you always, you know, find your way. And, and then, But again, we can also not uh, so much uh, disagree or disparage the ruling of uh, the uh, Supreme Court. Uh, it would appear that uh, they also had uh, a basis on which uh, they, they, they made their ruling. But it's unfortunate because this is a case that has taken over 10 years or so, much more than that. And uh, of course, these cases come with resources. So, so much money has spent on that. So at the end of the day, uh, just one mistake. I mean, how could the judge, how could they not have known that this was going to lead that way. And some people have cynically said perhaps they, they knew exactly what they were doing. Uh, you know, we well, never know. But uh, sometimes in Nigeria, the more you look, the less you see. It's unfortunate. Well, I, I want you to speak on this. Yeah. There's been some issues around. People have expressed concern that um, what happens after his release? Does he go back to the Senate? 
Um, is there anything that will stop him uh, from doing that? Let, let me ask Zeal this question. And then... Yeah, I don't think he has anything hanging you know, over his neck right now, but maybe he should take, take that. Uh, Zeal, what, what do you, what's your take on that? Uh, there are people speculating, is he going to go back to the Senate or um, is he going to step down? Like, what, where are we right now? Uh, well, um, if, if the Supreme Court says that the... Um, the judgment has been overruled and he's now free, then it means he's no longer a convict, yeah. which implies if you're not, if you don't have a, if you, if you're not a convict, then you can't go back to the Senate. Uh, so there's a difference between the moral issue and the legal issue. Legally, he can, he's a free man. Morally, morally, which and we're not very big on morals in this country, to be honest, he can go back to the Senate. However, Nothing stops the investigation. What has happened is that he's going to be tried afresh. And so morally, I don't think he should go back to the Senate. I don't think. But there's no law that prevents him from going back to the Senate, as far as I'm aware. It took us 10 years to get to this point. And now we have to start all over again. Who knows how long it's going to take this time. <laughs> anyway, yeah. anyway, gentlemen, I must say thank you very much for your time and your insights to these headlines. Thank you very much it's for coming. Pleasure. Thank you. And that's a wrap for the newspaper review this morning. Thank you for your company. Please go take a look at the papers in depth, look at the stories and make your independent assessment based on the suggestions put forward. My name is Felicity Ezewiki. Wish you a lovely day.